Have you ever wondered where you really stand with God? Are you overcome with feelings of guilt because of things you've done wrong? Are you tired of religion that focuses on rules that you can't keep? Have we got good news for you? It's time to listen in on some casual conversation with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski and discover what true freedom is all about. This is Growing in Grace. I've got Joel Brzezinski with me. I'm Mike Kapler, and this is the Growing in Grace podcast. Welcome aboard growingingrace.org. At the time of this recording, (laughs) all of our past archived programs are still there at growingandgrace.org. I don't know how long they're going to be there. Maybe quite a while. We've got hundred years. Are we approaching seven hundred yet? Yeah. That now I did the math on how many years last week, but (laughs) I I can't do the math on. (laughs) But yeah, we're getting close there. Fourteen years. Definitely, it's officially fourteen years now. At at the time of this recording, it's not 14 years yet, but at the time this is posted, <laughs> it's 14 years. All right. Well, hey, we're glad you're with us. Um, you know, we've been talking a little bit about the life of Jesus, like the life of Christ, but also during the life of Jesus, while he was a man on earth, we're looking at some different perspectives that sometimes people have, um, some of them good, maybe some of them a little bit off when it comes to the ministry that Jesus was um uh, that, that he was doing while he was walking around on on the earth during those few years. Joel, I, one thing that I've heard over the years uh, through different Bible teaching and, and whatnot is that the, the goal for us Christians is really, it's, it's really all about becoming more like Jesus. And I think there was a time in my life before I came to a, a better understanding of the gospel of grace where that, that made sense to me. Um, because we're just all working at trying to become, you know, better, better behavior, uh, less sin, more good stuff, different lifestyles, and and all of this, you know, more church stuff, more serving, more commitment, more prayer time, more Bible time. Come up with your own list. Everybody has one. <laughs> <laughs> Hardly any of them match, but everybody has a list, right? So doing all of these things is going to make us more like Jesus, right? Where do you think people go wrong with that? <laughs> where do I begin, Mr. <laughs> Kapler? Where do I begin? Well, you know, become more like Jesus, actually, just easy enough. Just, yeah, do all the things that you just said. That's, you know, pretty simple, <laughs> at least in many uh, sermons. It, it may may seem like yeah this is something that we should do this is this is what we're here for we're here to become more like jesus uh but yeah how how would we even go about that i'll start with with saying that okay jesus he is 100% righteous he he came to the earth as a man and he never did anything wrong and so in one sense, that would be the goal to never do anything wrong. If you're gonna, if you're gonna be like Jesus, you're gonna always, completely, one hundred percent of the time, obey God the Father. That's to be like Jesus. You're going to, you're going to never fail at doing that. You're going to always have a good answer for the people who come to you, uh, because Jesus, people had questions for Jesus, and he always had the right answer, and it wasn't always what they would think it would be. So you got to be wise, completely, 100%. And like you said, there's church service. There's uh, loving people as yourself. There's loving God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Um, So many, there's the goal that would be the goal. I mean, I, and I'm just speaking off the top of my head, really, that uh, what the goal would be if we're going to be like Jesus. And so with that goal of 100% righteous behavior, complete obedience and all that stuff. So yeah, <laughs> if if we were to shoot for that goal, that would be to me like a 1,000 mile walk where we can make it about maybe half an inch a day. And in other words, to me, to become more like Jesus through what I do, through the things that I do, would seem like it it would just be an impossible, a completely impossible task. And so that's why I kind of, I reject that idea of us trying to be more like Jesus. And I, I go with the the understanding that in Christ, we have actually become like him already, not through what we do, 
but as our identity. It's, it's the identity that God has made us to be. We've become like him already. We're not trying to be like him. So we'll see. Yeah, I don't know where exactly you wanted to go with this. We talked a little bit about it, but I think it's interesting to talk about this stuff. Well, yeah. I mean, First John, I think it's chapter four, the apostle wrote that as he is, speaking of Jesus, so also now are we in this world. You see, we received an inheritance. It's, it's, we, we've been reborn. We've been born again. We were born a first time, and we needed a new birth uh, of the Spirit. And we have that occur when we believe. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe in your heart. God raised him from the dead. It results in salvation and righteousness uh, as gifts. And, and, and the life that we enter with that, the life of Christ, eternal life. Some people just think eternal life is, I'm going to live forever. It's life that has always been. Thinking backwards now, that's hard for us to do as finite beings, but that's the life we have in us now. Life that always will be, life that has always been. As, as like a beginning without a beginning kind of life. And, but people, when they say, I'm just going to work at trying to become more like Jesus, it sounds good. It preaches good. It has a nice religious tone to it, doesn't it? But it misses the point of the gospel. And that is that we have become like Christ as Christians. We become like Christ through a gift of belief and, and the Spirit of God dwelling in us now, a new heart, the mind of Christ. I mean, these things. Now, I'm not saying that there isn't room for growth. We call our program Growing in Grace, but growing in our understanding that these things have already been established for us. That's where our, our growth and it probably needs to take place more than anywhere else is just understanding who we are in him, going back to our identity as, as righteous, holy, sanctified believers in Jesus Christ, justified, cleansed, forgiven. It's a great thing. And But to sit here and say, I'm going to become more like Jesus. Um, I, I know that I know people mean well when they say that. I do. I get it. I, I was there, as I said. But we, we filter so much of it through our own mindset on what that even is, even through our own culture sometimes. Joel, I had a guy tell me years ago that he could not picture Jesus laughing. He could picture him smiling, but not laughing. So in, in his mind, based on that, to become more like Jesus, uh, he couldn't laugh anymore, mm. right? <laughs> wow. <laughs> I mean, wow. I, you know, you know where I'm coming from here with, you know, the, the different mindsets that people can establish on on how they think Jesus behaved or, or who he is. And, the, you know, they want to become more like that. I, I don't think that we can really fully understand what what that would be for our day to day lives. Right. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, going along with with what you're saying, you know, there is a growth and, and there is even a, a transformation as, as life goes on. You know, Paul said, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And, and what is that renewing of the mind? You see, it's the, the growth, the, the, the transformation that would take place over the course of a lifetime and beyond, I think we'll be being transformed throughout eternity, but uh, the renewing of the mind as you renew your mind to what? To the, I think it's to the truth that uh, what you were just talking about, that we are already like Jesus. We have the mind of Christ. You know, Paul wrote, uh, he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. We've been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Renew our minds to that truth, and we will notice a, a, a transformation taking place. But that's not really what the See, Paul says that in chapter 12 of Romans, after spending almost 11 chapters, um, a great deal of the first 11 chapters, talking about the, the identity that we have in Jesus Christ apart from what we do. Uh, the transformation comes, I think, from knowing who we already are. We've already been made like Christ. And so as we renew our minds to that truth, yeah, we're going to see some changes. But that, that change is not what life is about in Christ. It's a result of the life that we have in Christ. But really, so many people have, I think, a knowledge of what they're, quote, supposed to do. And, and again, like you say, their list, their lists will vary. 
one denomination has these certain requirements, another denomination has these, or one preacher has these this list of what it looks like, or someone else will preach something else, and and nobody really has the same list of what it's supposed to look like. But either way, people go to church and they hear this list and these principles of all the things that they're supposed to do, and all the while they are missing out on the life of Christ who is in them and the truth of their identity that has nothing to do with what they do, that has nothing to do with what we're talking about here, becoming more like Christ. It really has nothing to do with all that stuff. Really, it's, it's, an, identity that, that, it's an identity that we have received as a gift. We've been born anew. We've received new life. We were born once as a human being to human parents, and we got our identity from them. Now we've been born again, spiritually speaking, and we're sons of the living God, and that's our identity. And it's not based upon trying to become anything, trying to avoid this and do this. It's really based solely upon birth and, and what God, the identity that God has given us, again, apart from anything that we do. Yeah, apart from anything that we do. That's it. Because that going back to the, the birth and the inheritance thing, I mean, it's just something that is gifted to us. We don't really have, you know, any control over that. It's it's just something that God has gifted to us. It's 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 all about life. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. And so this is where we're at here today. How do we become and this is another one, maybe we can get into this next time. How do we become a better follower of Jesus? Um, how do we become more like him? And, you know, I'm not trying to come down on people who insist on calling themselves followers of Jesus, but most of the time, almost all of the time that that word appears, it's in the four books known as the Gospels because the followers were people who literally were following Jesus as he went from one place to another. So when we kind of talk, we kind of throw these uh, these words around today about um, becoming a follower or being a follower. What does that mean exactly? What does it mean to be a follower? How many followers do we have here today of Jesus? Uh, and so we, we kind of throw this stuff around, but really – I'm not following Jesus from one place to the next, like the followers uh, described in in the scriptures. It's kind of a different thing, but maybe we can get into that a little bit more next time, because we'll find out that even those who were following, they stopped following. When? At the cross. And we'll get more into that. Yeah, yes, indeed. We'll get more into that, talking about I, you know, this catchphrase that people talk about identifying ourselves as followers of Jesus. So we'll do that next week. And then after that, we'll talk a little bit about the law and how Paul says the law is not of faith. So we'll spend a week or maybe more talking about that and how as believers, are we under the law or not? Of course, uh, you know the answer to that, but we'll talk about that in the weeks to come right here on Growing in Grace at growingingrace.org. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski. Heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. To access hundreds of past programs, visit graceroots.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.